This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's just briefly look at a very small part of the syllabus, but it doesn't matter how small it is. It's all important, isn't it? Because everything's going to be examined in some way, shape or form, isn't it? Uh, and it's all about alpha values. Now, alpha values are looking effectively at the actual return an investment is giving you based upon capital growth. Uh, based upon the dividend that you're receiving as well and then comparing that to what you think you should get theoretically okay so the simple difference between the actual return and the theoretical return is the alpha value okay so we work out the theoretical compared to the actual which would have to be given to us within the question and you get the difference uh, as well as knowing what the alpha value is in terms of how to calculate it you would also then be expected to interpret it uh, because what you've got there is that if your actual return is greater than your theoretical return, then surely you'd want to buy into that investment. So if it is a positive alpha value, we will buy the shares. But if the actual return is less than what your theoretical return is stating, then that's a negative alpha value and you would not buy that investment. And if you held it, you, you, you'd likely to be going through there and selling it in okay, case so you can invest the proceeds elsewhere and get your return that you require okay because at the end of the day you know we can work out all the theory in terms of the capital asset pricing model but you know how accurate is that measure of beta okay is it a hundred percent accurate uh, we also have issues as well and it just looks at the return that you get at a particular point in time so if you like for a single period it doesn't look at it over a longer period of time and try to to measure the expected returns more into the future okay so there are some if you like limitations to the model and because of that there are then differences to the theoretical return that we would expect to get okay so if we compare theory with the actual that's where we can bring in alpha values so if we go through and look at the question here it just says what is the alpha value of dplc so that just goes through there and looks at the actual return less your theoretical cap m return okay now, from the question, it says D has a beta of 0 0.6, which gives a return of 8%. Okay, so that return of 8% is what we're actually getting, okay, uh, with that beta of 0 0.6. Is that beta right? Don't know. Okay, it's, it's, it's an estimate, isn't it? The market return 10%. Again, that's based on history and into the past, isn't it? The risk-free rate is possibly what we know with the most certainty, okay, it's the easiest one to get. But what it means is that the estimate that we work out is different to ultimately that 8% that we are actually getting. So to work out the CAPM return, uh, we take the risk-free rate is that 4%. We add on 0 0.6, so a, a defensive investment as beta is less than 1%. And the risk premium is at ten percent less the four, so is that six? So what we've got there is eight percent less seven point six. So the alpha value is there as positive zero point four, and if it's positive. We're going to go through there and buy that share, okay? Because what we actually get is higher than what we predict we should get theoretically. If it was negative, so let's just say the actual return stays at eight percent, uh, and the cap M return moved up to nine, uh, then therefore eight less nine is minus one, and therefore that's a negative alpha value. So we would expect to go through there and sell that investment. That's it. Okay, there's nothing else to it in terms of alpha value. So if you get a question on alpha values in the exam, thumbs up, you should be able to do it reasonably straightforwardly.